What does it mean to have someone advocate for me? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt. I am here with Dr. Rod Rosenblatt. This is Talks with Dad Rod. Dad, what does it mean to have an advocate? Well, I think we, we learn this in an earthly way, uh, primarily through having a good father who will advocate for us. And then it spills over beyond that. Um, my dad was always advocating for me if it was uh, called for. Always saw me in the best possible light. Um, and I remember back when I was yanking you out of the government schools, we worked out a deal where Ted, for a history paper, handed in uh, a history paper that had footnotes in four different languages. Well, of course, that caught the teacher's attention, and she said very solemnly, Ted, I want you to think about this before you answer me. Did you write this paper completely without other sources, just on your own? No other help. No other help. And Ted and I, and I had pre-planned this. You told me. You said when she asks <clears throat> yeah, you, when, and she will. And she will. I told Ted to answer, yes, ma'am. So then it escalated to the principal. And we were both called in and uh, seated in lower chairs while he and his women were seated in higher chairs. And he came to the same question. Ted, very serious. Did you write this history paper completely without aid from others? And I'd already told him to answer yes. So that's exactly how it played. And then the principal turned to me and asked the same question. And I said, yes, sir. And there was no place else for them to go. Now, we knew this was how it was going to play. We did this just for the sheer fun of it. Uh, he'd already been accepted at a Harvard prep school we knew he wasn't staying. This was just for fun. So we, we walked out afterwards, high-fived one another, and laughed our tails off. Now, the, the wrap-up to that was, uh, the, the fun little part was, because you worked at Concordia, uh -huh. you, you pulled the, he pulled the, uh, the uh, principal aside after that little meeting and said, come here. And you said, uh, let, me, let me ask you a question. Um, I'm connected up there at Concordia, and I can make a couple phone calls. Um, I'm sure the state would, uh, uh, if they came down here and investigated your books, that they'd find that everything is completely above board, right? Here's how this is going to go. You're gonna, I'm going to pull Ted out and put him in a school that has teachers who actually know how to teach. And you're going to show him as completing the seventh grade. And I told people, I said, I got a what I get? I got I got like a seven month summer that year. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, this is like your story about the car with your dad. I was like, I couldn't believe what happened. And of course, that guy was like, oh, <laughs> that curly haired principal was just like, oh no. Yep. He, well, he looked a lot like uh, Sutherland in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The, the two of them looked very. If you ever look at that old movie, that was what the old principal looked like. You know. Well, anyway. I was advocating for Ted, and we had prearranged it. He knew what I was going to say. I knew what he was going to say. But I was advocating for him. Um, and this is really important as to our whole childhood and how we look for those who will at least not sell us down the drain, that their inclination is to come to, well, the, the French word is avocat, uh, lawyer, to stand alongside us and defend us. Even if we're not able to do it, he'll do it for us. So, and, and you see the same thing in Jesus' promise that he will send to the disciples someone like him uh, who will be their advocate. It's very difficult to translate that word, but he, he promises another like himself that he will send to them. I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you orphaned. And they had no idea what he's talking about, of course, but it didn't matter. Um, advocacy is something we learn from a good father who will advocate for us. And the imagery I've gotten from you and, and Dr. Montgomery... Craig Parton and some others is, you know, the, the, the attorneys really uh, in, in our midst 
is the imagery of the 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 judge rightfully calling down the law um yep. uh, you know, and dropping the gavel yep and Jesus being the one that stands up and stands in there and says send uh, me yep send me to the send me to the to the gallow yep you know go and torture me to death kill me Subst- let let this one go yep substitution christianity is about substitution and literally, the right language, I think, would be, sent, let my brother go. Yep. That's the way he set it up. Through adoption, that would be, Yep. I will, I will take his death. Yep. Yeah, Christianity is not primarily about morality. It's about something for us immorals. It's a rescue for immorals, those who really deserve punishment. And in Adam, that's all of us. But it's easier to believe... This is where the advocacy is so valuable. And we keep returning to this. We're going to keep touching on this. When in the home, mother and father advocate for the child and they stand up and do the hard thing. Like I joked years ago before I even had kids that I figured that someday I was going to get called in to the um, principal's office because one of the kids had made some comment about... um, something with bad language, yep. you know, and I was ready to, I was ready to walk in there and, and hear, and hear them say, do you know what your son or your daughter said today? And wait for them to say it. And I would, and my, my the response I always had in my back pocket was, uh, what's the problem? Did they use it correctly in a sentence? Yeah. Was their grammar? I'm not really clear on what the problem is here. It sounds like their grammar was on point. Yep. Um, to te- kind of tear the rug out from under the, the moralists yep. who would, who would make this a bigger deal than, than. <laughs> Yeah, and today the the chances of them being able to do this with that wretched political correctness, they can always find something that your son or your daughter said badly. Or Or did badly. Did badly. Yeah, there's always something. We have the law written on our hearts, and boy, we're good at using it. God, we don't have to send our children to the government schools. God bless every parent or parents who are homeschooling. I know that's really hard to do. But you will, in many ways, save your kids' lives. And that, that is its own form of advocacy when, when uh, I mean, here in California, the things that uh, kids are being forced oh, gosh. into is, is ah. um, unbelievable. So <clears throat> we're going to wrap it. Why you went a little long on this. We could have done this one. We could have done this easily twice as long. Yep. Anyway, hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed this. Go to 1517.org for more. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.